I accumulate stories is people will tell me stories and I'll go out and tell the stories on a stage then somebody will come up after the speech and tries to outdo the story so one day an individual says to me I have a story of the 1913 flood you have to go down to southern Ohio and you have to talk to a woman down there you you're gonna love the story Jim because the place that it happened she still lives there and that and that always adds to a story that wouldn't tell me anymore. He wanted me to be a surprise when I arrived there and got the story as you are when I tell you. So the only thing I thought, I was going down and collect a flood story. I get down to the house, I pull up, there's a white picket fence in front of the house. The house I can tell is unchanged since the turn of the century and uh, I walk up the walk to the, the house and over to the left I noticed something. I noticed actually a grave. It looked like and I knew that that's illegal. You can't have a regular grave in your, in your side yard. So I saw something that looked like a grave. It had a little fence around it, it had rocks around it, and uh, I just kind of took a look at it. I'm observing as I go in. I knock on the door, a woman comes to the door. What's amazing about this is I get a feeling right away as a storyteller that's accumulated stories all my life that this is going to be unbelievable. She looks at me in the eye. The person had already called her and warned, me, warned her about me coming. I prepared her, said that Jim isn't there to exploit your story in any way. He's just there to tell your story. Here's the story. She says, and she starts in in a great way. I also realize I'm standing on the porch, and as she tells the story, it's exactly where it happened. She says, I'm standing on the porch with my daughter. It's 1913. The flood is just, uh, the flood is over, and, but the water is still high back of her house where, where there's a creek. I tell her not to go near the creek because if you go near the creek, the water is still swirling, it'll pull you in. That's what I said, and she said this to me right on the porch. She said, so I turn, and the little girl goes down the steps. She said, I go in, and I'm finishing the dishes. Here's the greatest line. She says, and now, I follow her into the kitchen, so I'm following her the same way you would if you're a camera and you're, you're actually filming this story. I walked in behind her, she goes to the sink, and she imitates actually washing dishes. And she said, Jim, being a man, you might not understand this part of the story. But as I'm doing the dishes, I suddenly thought of my daughter, and I knew she wasn't in the world anymore. And she said, I dropped the dishes in the sink and I ran out of the kitchen and I went around the porch and again, I'm following her. So she runs to the edge of the, she walks really quickly to the edge of the porch. I follow her. She said, I looked towards the creek and I could see her red jacket. Then I run down there. She didn't do this. She just stopped. And she stopped between the porch and where I said that there was a little cemetery plot. And she said, I saw the jacket and I ran down towards the jacket. When I got there, I could see the scuff marks in the mud and I realized she had fallen into the water and then she stopped talking. She turns to me and she slowly walks up on the porch and she leans against the porch and she says to me, we never found the body. And she said, we never found the body, so it always gave me hope that maybe she'd one day come back. And she said, I knew it was a false hope, but she said, otherwise I had to face that she was dead. Now, she said, approximately two weeks later, I'm on the porch and I'm sweeping. And she said, all of a sudden, she said, every day at the time that my daughter would come home from school, she had the same routine back when she was alive. There's a, there's a, and the picket fence was still there. She said, down where the picket fence is, she'd had the edge of her book bag. And as she came along, she'd rub the edge of the book bag and it'd make the sound. Da -da 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 all the way down to the opening. And then I would get down on one knee and I'd wait for her to come around. She'd come around the opening of the gate and she'd come running towards me and I'd hug her. This was every day she came home from school. One day I'm out there, it's the same, same time. She's been gone for years, I'm sweeping the porch. All of a sudden she says, I hear the tick, 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 tick. And she said that, that hope that had been fading suddenly came back really strong. I could see the light dark, light dark, and there was something that was as tall as her now going along the way. And she said, I didn't go down on my knee, but I just held my breath, and around the corner came a dog. And she said, I'm deathly afraid of dogs. So she said, the dog came straight up the porch towards me, came up on the porch steps. I stepped to one side, made a beeline in the door, and she pointed this out to me, took a direct left, and went into my daughter's room. And she said, as I eased into the house and looked at the dog, the dog is sitting on my daughter's bed. Now, here's what she said. I never changed my daughter's room. Again, I had that hope that she would somehow come back. 
And she said, I looked up on the bed in that room that never changed, and there sits a dog staring at me with his head turned. She said, it really was scary to me. So I went into the kitchen, and I went up to the sink, and I did work there, and I just hoped the dog would leave because I was afraid of it. So the next thing I heard were these paws coming across the kitchen floor. And when I turned down, the dog sitting there and in its mouth had a ribbon that belonged to the girl that I had never found. She said, and here's what she said to me. She turns to me on the, she goes, Jim, that was the first sign. But here's the final sign. She said, it became Saturday. The dog slept in the girl's thing. I started feeding him, and he slept in the girl's room on top of the bed. Now, this is after three days passes. I'm getting used to the dog. And again, I've always been frightened of dogs, but this dog is a little different. And something is happening inside me. So I knew Saturday would prove it, because here's what would happen on Saturday when the girl would lie. I would go to the door. The girl would come down, and we'd walk towards the park together, which is down the street. As soon as we got about halfway to the park, she would run ahead, run into the opening of the park, go around and hide between a large, behind a, a large oak tree. I would go in there as if I'm hunting for her and say, where are you, where are you, where are you? And I'd search through the park. And then when i come around, she'd go, there you are. And then she'd jump out and we'd hug. We'd, and again, it was our routine, routine that we did every, every Saturday. She said, I, le I come out of the door on Saturday. I start walking toward the park and I hear it tick, 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 tick. The dog's following me. All of a sudden, the dog is beside me as I'm walking. As soon as we get approximately halfway, the dog takes off running, runs directly into the park, and goes around the tree. She said, tears started to well up my eyes, because then, and she looked at me. Now, she's looking at me, the way I'm looking in this camera, and she goes, then I knew it was true, Jim. I didn't even have to look behind the tree. Because when I got around the tree, the dog is sitting there, looking up at me with the same look as the daughter. And she said, then I knew the dog was my daughter come back. And she said, I took the dog back to the house. The first time I ever picked it up, I picked it up. And it was just like having my daughter in my arms. I took her back into the kitchen. I tied the ribbon she had found that first day in her hair. And that dog became my daughter for the rest of its life. And I know as you tell this story to an audience or a people watching in a film, they're going to say, okay, the woman lost her daughter. She rationalized the loss of the daughter. She couldn't face the loss of the daughter. So she made up this thing. This dog just happened to come along and she had, she made it as though the dog became the daughter, but it's all in her imagination. And she said, when the dog passed away, Jim, what I did was, is the burial that you saw at the side of the house, I didn't have any closure with my daughter. So I made a grave site for my daughter, but my daughter was never in it. And of course, when the dog died, who was my daughter, I buried the dog in the grave, uh, in the grave that was made for my daughter. And, she, and I'm looking now, I just heard the story as you've heard it. I'm looking at the woman and I'm being rational about it. I'm going, okay, coping mechanism with the with the loss of a daughter. Then she said, but I have something to show you, Jim, that will prove it as much as it proves it to me. Because she said, I had a photo taken of the dog not, not long before it died. And she said, it wasn't till actually, I really believed it was my daughter come back. But when I finally saw the photo, and as you will see, you'll see in comparison, I have down on this frame I'm gonna show you, I have a picture of my daughter. I also have a picture of the dog. And I think that anybody that looks at this picture will look at the daughter and then look at the dog and realize these are the same person. say about this story. I tell stories. Many stories I tell from the stage, I try to have an object. But I think with this object yourself, as you're viewing this, you realize the importance of this object. I could tell this story, and I think it would be an intriguing story to people. 
But when you finally look into the face of the girl, then you look into the face of the dog, I realize, you realize this is something that can't be explained normally. I think what you have is something that's paranormal that you have to sit and think about and deal with. If I'd have just told the story without the object, you'd have come away saying a coping mechanism of a mother that lost a child. But I think the picture takes it into another dimension, and I think it makes you think about it on a deeper level.